Hey there, Jeremy here from rcnightmare.com with a uh, little post running tip. Nothing super original, but uh, we just got done with uh, a little bit of a shoot with the summit outside in the snow. And, uh, you know, I thought, hey, why not film the, the cleanup a little bit to make sure that you cover all your bases? So, surprisingly, <laughs> uh, I thought, uh, I didn't think there'd be this much snow inside after I ran it. Uh, you know, this, while things are waterproof, they're certainly not rust proof. And there are a lot of uh, moving parts in here and metal pieces that you're going to want to take care of, especially in the winter time here. Uh, again, you want to keep it maintained like normal anyway, or if it even got wet, in, you know, for example, uh, you want to make sure that you keep things clean. Uh, the first step is really to try to get the snow off. Now, I'm just going to use this box. I sh you know, most people, you should just clean it off outside. Um, but I'm going to kind of shake off all the snow, what I can here, and get a clean kind of starting point. You want to get all the moisture out of there. You know, you may even want to kind of set it down and really kind of rattle it. I'm getting a lot of snow. I can hear it falling out. And uh, it's falling out all over my table. But again, it's important that you guys see all this. There's still quite a bit of snow uh, on the inside. I'm going to show you a couple ways to get rid of it. Now I'm going to use my uh, handy shirt slash rag. Not one of our shirts, of course. Those are golden. And so now I've gotten most of the pile of snow out. There's still quite a bit of snow on the inside. Um, next thing you're going to want to do is try to just use whatever tool you might have, screwdriver or a rag, piece of plastic, just to kind of break this stuff free. So that's what I'm going to do next. Let's kind of break it free. I don't know how well this is going to work. I'm going to try it out, but I think canned air. Yep, canned air works good. Kind of clear it out. Obviously, this isn't going to work quite as good if it's just water, but it's working great for snow. It's working absolutely great for snow. Um, it's getting all the large chunks out. It's also forcing a lot of air through. That's helping dry things. You're going to want to be careful with canned air because it can get pretty cold in your hand. The more you use the bottle, the colder it gets. So now I got, that did actually an excellent job. Now you can see, uh, let me shake it out a little more. You can see almost all the snow is gone now. What I want to do here is now take a rag you're going to probably end up raking it off a couple times, but it's all in the interest of kind of keeping things rust free and working the way you like them. There's a couple of products out there, obviously, uh, that you want to put on in an after run situation. I want to point out, too, don't uh, ignore your, your wheels. They can be full of snow and it'll get in where everything really needs the largest range of motion possible. Um, clean off my workspace here again. If you're out in the dirt and stuff like that too, you can really pick up a lot of grime and stuff you don't want in your RC. Um, I'm going to hit it again here with the canned air. Trying to use it as both, trying to use it as both a hair dryer, so to speak, and something that breaks loose the snow. Now, if you can imagine the snow is like dirt, this same methodology is going to work great for that, too. Um, you know, this video is going to end up being a little long, but I kind of want to take you through in real time everything that you need. I don't want to cut through. I don't want to cut things out. Uh, that are important. 
it's important that you take care of your RCs. You know, not all of them are waterproof, like Traxxas, but that can be misleading too. Um, you know, you see videos like this out on the internet where, uh, where things are, you know, they totally submerge them. But let's say you're not running a Traxxas and you're running whatever. Uh, you know, they're not going to be as waterproof, not going to be as forgiving as a Traxxas will. That's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. So now uh, you can see that I've cleared away the vast majority of any snow. There's sn certainly a good amount of moisture still in there. And uh, I've seen people use hair dryers. And obviously, I'm using canned air to try to not only force out any standing moisture. In this case, it would be snow, like a pile of snow. Or you know, if it's, if, if it's not just snow with you, it's just water. It's a great way just to kind of dry things off. But after you've dried things off, it's important that you, you're not done yet. You've got two pretty important steps. You want to keep hand drying it, take the moisture out. While the, while the air does clear it away, there's a lot of surface moisture left, a lot of dirt and grime sitting in the corners. That's the stuff that kills you. It's not necessarily the, you know, the water that you see. It's the stuff that you can't see. And that's why aerosol cans are so helpful when it comes to it. Like it's, you know, it's those little beads of water that get in your shocks or in your motor, um, you know, in your ESC uh, that will just sit there forever because you miss them and just rust. <laughs> so if you're running it like I am here in the winter, you want to really kind of get all the little corners and nooks and crannies. So I feel pretty confident now that I've gotten most of the standing water out. Um, I'm going to continue to rake it off. Uh, but the next real step uh, after this is you can take some, uh, they've got various like engine treatment things. Magnum Force, I think, is one of the ones they sell at my local hobby shop. Uh, you know, I, I don't trust it necessarily to prevent rust, but I do like to give a, the motor a couple of sprays to make sure that everything's good. So this stuff here, Magnum Force 2, so much better than the original Magnum Force, which I, of course, never heard of. Um, it's pretty popular down the shop. People tend to you know, spray it kind of all over. You can also take the nozzle off an aerosol can, too, and get a more uh, uh, a broader spray and really just kind of dry things off. One important thing, too, you don't want to tip it upside down like this. As you can see, it's ice cold. It's spraying out straight condensation. And whew, your hand gets cold as heck. So the Magnaforce stuff, you know, basically it's it removes bearing girt, uh, grit. It's safe on most plastic. It removes oils, greases, grime dirt, silicones, and other contaminants. And it evaporates quickly, leaving no residue. Uh, this is something I like to spray in really areas where there are bearings, in the motor, just to kind of apply a little bit of clean. So a little burst inside the motor here. Hope you can see this. And I kind of like to work it in a little bit. Now this stuff is not exactly super safe. I should have wore eye protection. I didn't. But especially if you're going to go back in and try to use your canned air again, keep in mind that it's there. You don't want to be like spraying canned air and then get a shot of this stuff in your eye. It's very dangerous. Um, then a, a really more commonly used method to not only keep, keep things clean and running good is using good old WD-40. 
It's a great way to not only remove rust, but keep things lubricated. Um, I like to put it in all my metal moving parts. Try to get a couple of blasts in on each main area here, just to prevent rust. Now Traxxas does a pretty good job of sealing things, but water is very tricky. Um, you want to kind of check out your shocks and work it in. You don't want to just kind of spray it on. You want to move it around a little bit and uh, kind of get the full range of motion so that WD-40 can work in. Do the same thing on the front. I mean, other than wasting WD-40, there's not a huge drawback to kind of just being generous with it. The lubricant, it's going to prevent uh, you know, rust from forming. It's going to keep things moving how you remember them. And then after you spray down the WD-40, you're going to want to spend another good probably 10, 15 minutes wiping it down. Continue to wipe it down. Keep getting that condensation off there, especially if you just come in. It's important to remember that. If your RC is still cold, it's going to start. It's going to pick up more and more condensation as it moves to your house's room temperature. Um, so you're not quite always. You're never quite totally done maintaining it, but you really want to do the best job you can. And uh, you can see, I'm going to kind of shake out some of the WD-40 here, and the the just dirt and grime that came out. really makes you feel good about uh, you know, a job well done. So that's really post running tips, especially for winter. Uh, if you live in a winter state or a state that has a lot of snow, like me and uh, the RC Nightmare team here in Wisconsin, you're going to want to pay uh, special attention to this. Um, the other important thing is that you should always disconnect your batteries when you're spraying this stuff in. Um, or, of course, make sure your truck's off. You don't want to have any electrical current going through that. So almost all of these cleaning uh, products are flammable. Uh, if you have any other questions about post-run or things you need to be doing to maintain your RC, uh, especially here in winter, we certainly are uh, very familiar with it. It can be demotivating <laughs> wanting to go out and, and race and then have the uh, punishment of having to clean it all up. Uh, some people really like it. I certainly don't. But it's the only way your RCs are going to last. You've got to take care of them. And so if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Or you can, of, of course, always shoot over to our forum at rcnightmare.com. Thanks, and have a great day.